All right, guys, welcome back to Valorant News. The kickoffs continue around the world, but yesterday all the VCT capsules officially dropped into the game. Lots of reaction here, people debating which are the best, which are potentially the worst, but also the player cards in the background of the images. Sentinels one getting roasted pretty hard by FNS, but they reveal exactly what they initially apparently proposed to be their player cards, which was clearly rejected by Riot Games. Very much interested in your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. First of all, though, there's lots happening yesterday. Also, the chamber updates we saw these small updates to the headhunter it's um well price has been reduced and then the tour de force increase in the fire rates have been now added into the game so there was some debate when this was rumored that whether other teams will start to use chamber more and more often of course there's talk about bleed and well what fns had to say on yay and say look if you're using yay as bleed you've got to put him on the best roles and maybe that small change will push chamber to be more viable and i'm hoping that we get to see yay on chamber more often than not going forward because i don't really know what bleed are using him on the viper for but to be fair fns says this about uh, yay and then angel replies i thought it was pretty funny and says look artist was being used by fns on nrg and he was playing the sage and stuff like that so maybe it kind of goes both ways on this one that fns could have used artist better himself himself last year because of course artist now back with Navi okay it was FPX before but now he's on Navi with the um with Angel and those boys over there and as artist actually says he went to America had a bit of fun collected the bag and now I'm back where I belong with Angel and Navi and of course they got the victory yesterday as we'll see here in a second this was another series as well that we'll dive into because there's a lot happening at the moment and um just really criticizing some of the VLR ratings I do find it frustrating to look at actually I think maybe I need to start organizing the scoreboard by ACS or something rather than by rating because, you know, if you're Takas, lots of impact in terms of first bloods, loads of engagements, but because he's on the Yoru, he gets like a terrible rating, which I just don't think is particularly fair. Like, um, you know, if you don't get any engagements, for some reason your VLR rating gets better. It's kind of confusing, but let's go all around the world here. So firstly, starting with the EMEA, we saw these two results yesterday. Yesterday, though, as well, had three games in Europe on Group B and Group C. These pretty much went as expected. Narby took down BPL. This was, or BBL. It was a bit of a close one. They lost the game one, but then they bounced back 13-6, 13-6, so it never really felt out of their control. Liquid took down Movistar KY as well, 2-0, 13-10, 13-11 in the end, so that was pretty close to be fair, and Keiko had, a, I think it was the map one, yeah, 37 kills he had game one here with the icebox. Absolutely absurd on their pick, and that's on the jet, so you gotta think. And then Team Vitality, they took down Gentlemates here, 2-0. This is like a Vitality without Trex as well, so there's lots of thoughts about this, and, well, we saw the comments, let's say, on the ratings on this one. But yeah, this was 13-10, 13-7 in the end. So Vitality go through. They all play Fnatic in the next round. Na'Vi play Liquid in the next round. And then the Loser's Bracket Games, of course, are also coming up very shortly indeed. That continues today with the winner's side, Heretics versus Casey. The Americas gets back underway, by the way, tomorrow. This is what happened in the Pacific as well. So Zaytuk took down Global Esports 2-0. This was an interesting one, really, just because it was actually very dominant like Depp just crushed it this series 13 8 13 3 in the NT on the Lotus so despite GE I mean it makes you wonder how bad are bleeds right like I think Global Esports have a lot of work to do but the fact that Global Esports lost to lost to that I mean I don't know it wasn't particularly pretty was it they're out of there then though Team Secret I will say Team Secret looked awful when they played DFM but fair play to them because they've turned it around here and this Filipino team is actually coming different at the moment because um you know they won this one 2-0 13 8 13 7 against Talon, knocking them out of the tournament. So despite the fact that Governor and Ban looked like they're pretty promising on that Talon Esports team, they took Secret down the first time, then though they got beaten the second time. So Secret made it through to the play-in, but of course, as I've said before, the number one seed is really what you want to be getting. And then, of course, we saw the other results yesterday. This, though, feeds into the play-in. So this is how it stands. Let me hit the refresh on this so we can see what matches are currently ongoing. So Team Secret got 2 ones by Gen G. Basically, only one of these teams makes it through, right? They play a single round robin between the three teams, and then the team that wins both of their games effectively, they make it through to the playoffs with the other three teams that made it out of the respective groups, which of course are in this case T1, DRX, and Paper X. So Jinji got the victory here against Team Secret 2-1, to 
this was a ridiculous series, by the way, as well. Like, fair play to Team Secrets. They, you know, did well where they were. They won the breeze, but then Gen G came back swinging 13 and then the icebox was ridiculous. Went all the way down to a 15-13. Crazy overtime. Secret even won the very first round of the overtime. Just had to close out a defense. Didn't happen, though. Ridiculous end to the series. And this was really Texture's first somewhat underwhelming series, but yet his team still stepped up to carry them through. So, thought that was impressive by Gen G and they should be favoured, I suppose, to make it out of this group now. But I suppose, to be fair to Team Secret, if they were to smash Zeta, and we'll see what they're doing to them in a second here, then if it ends like 1-1-1, then I guess, you know, it comes down to round counts, map differential, this type of stuff. And Team Secret have bounced back big time here. They dominated the Icebox here 13-1. Like, just completely destroyed Zeta. I don't know what happened here, to be honest, because I didn't get a chance to watch this series live. So fair play, of course, to Team Secret on their pick off, just losing it, of course, to Gen G. And then right now, they're up 11-8 on the Ascent. So it's looking like Team Secret getting the dub here. And then if, if Genji were going to beat Zeta later today, then that would put Genji through to the playoffs with those other teams that I just mentioned. Just to quickly mention China as well, because it's now underway over there as well. Trace Esports took down Tyloo 2-0. Tyloo looked really shocking in this one, to be perfectly honest. The Ascent was 13-4, the Sunset was 13-3. So yeah, pretty rough showing from those guys. And the rest of it is continuing shortly. So those are the updates on the VST from around the world. Lots happening, of course. Course. We've got to get into these VCT capsules. So firstly, actually, the Afaria does say that the Pacific venue, which is not their own venue, right? And that's probably been causing some of these issues with the tech delays and all of that stuff that happened day one. Leo does say they will be moving to a different Pacific venue for the regular season, which is probably to correct some of those issues and actually maybe getting more of their own stuff in play here. But let's talk about the capsules because they arrived yesterday, not for China yet. The confirmation has been they'll arrive for China down the line. The China capsules will drop shortly before Masters Shanghai. So in May, that is the plan. But this is what they look like. I mean, honestly, what they've done here is really cool and there's no doubt that this is going to be a great thing for the esports landscape in general this for example is the fanatic one you know the cards the calling cards the team logos the buddies and obviously the classic skin which is a pretty cool thing you know it would be nice i think if they were available for like every weapon or something and these are pretty expensive to be honest i mean 23 40 vp each i mean yeah, they're definitely charging, I think, a little bit more than I might seem as reasonable. But still, you've got to understand why. And of course, at the end of the day, if we want to make esports actually a viable business proposition, these are the type of things that actually make that work. Because the money goes to Riot, but then also a lot of it goes to the teams. And the teams can therefore generate revenue in this way. People want to support the teams. You know, you've got the nice inspect animation here, which is pretty cool stuff. And obviously, we see Zelsis put together his tier list on the bundle and we'll come back to some of these cards here in just a couple of seconds. These, though, are all of those banners, or I guess the cards, I suppose. And, well, we'll have a look right now in a second at the Sentinels one, which is down there on the left-hand side. I think lots of these are actually really cool, to be fair. The MIBR one was really cool as well, because they even had a 1.6 teaser, and this we'll discuss in a second. But, um, yeah, the Sentinels one was super basic. They were getting roasted for it. These are arguably the best things, really, on the of the bundle, because at least these, the team's got to design them themselves. The skins, unfortunately, maybe, but it's understandable, are basically copy and paste with different colors, and we'll see that in a second, whereas at least the cards, the team's got to design these themselves and could come up with some really cool ideas here. So lots of these are really, really nice, I think, and it's great to see. These, however, are all the classic skins that come with the set. Of course, you get the buddy as well, but these are the classic skins. And, you know, maybe this was expected, but they are effectively just the same design with the team logo on, which, you know, I think probably is fine. I mean, when you're going to have 40 odds, you know, 44 skins, if, they, if every skin was going to be different and the teams designed it themselves, then you've got to have someone that puts that into the game. It's pretty challenging. I do hope they could do this at some points, though, where each team could, you know, have their own graphic designer, make a skin, and then Riot would actually port that into the game. I think that would be a nice step. But for now, this is pretty nice. And there's lots of color variations on these weapons. So every gun looks pretty unique. Some of them are a bit different. I think the Lev ones are particularly nice. The MIBR skin, I think, is pretty cool as well. The NRG one is just gray, which is pretty dull. If I got just a gray, and same with Fury, really. I mean, Fury and NRG look 
look super similar. So um, yeah, if I was either of those teams, I don't think I'd be especially happy, to be honest, with how it turned out. There's some cool ones in the NBA as well, like the BBL one. I will say that Giantex and Carmine Corp are very similar. I guess there are a few differences, but even the Liquid one, lots of these are very, very similar, to be fair. And it's probably expected when, I mean, Navi and Vitality as well, probably expected when you've got 44 skins, this is what it's going to look like. And obviously, we'll see the Chinese ones soon enough. They're not in the game yet because their system only just begun. And I think the Pacific ones, like the T1 one, I think is kind of, um, well, different to some of the others. Paper X as well is really nice because it's just if you've got unique colors, you can do unique things with it, which is what's happened here for Paper X. So these are the skins anyway, if you guys haven't seen them yet. And this is what Sentinels are cooking up here as well with, let's say, an interesting composition here with the Phoenix, Harbor, Cypher, Sova, and Astra on the left-hand side. But the main criticism, I think, of the Sentinels bundle, because of course, again, they're the biggest team, they're probably going to be the one that sells the most, was that their card was far from spectacular compared to what many people were expecting. You know, it's just the Sentinels logo. There's nothing really particularly special going on here. So as FNS says, that send card is jail worthy, right? Because people, you know, they like the skins, but at the end of the day, people want the nice card, especially because some of the cards are really cool, as we saw just a couple of seconds ago. Now, Sentinels actually went on to delete this tweet, but and I don't know who told them to delete this, whether Riot told them to delete this or whatever, but Sentinels tweeted this out. Imagine a world where this got approved, and this is what you know, supposedly they proposed as their card. Now, people are saying, oh, maybe they're just joking around. I kind of doubt it because it's quite the effort to go to make this just for the Twitter joke. You know what I mean? Like maybe they did, but the amount of detail that's got into this image here with the send logo here, and the send logo here and everything involved makes me think that probably this is what they actually propose. And did they expect to get this approved? I'm somewhat less convinced, but uh, maybe, I don't know. And when I suppose Riot said, maybe that's not appropriate for the children's game that we basically have, then they could have proposed something else, such as this, the Bodog says, but in the end, they had to kind of resort to a more basic alternative. So thought that was rather entertaining. Very much interested to your thoughts in the comments below. Cover the Scrimbucks as well, because things, as I say, are getting underway tomorrow again in the America side. These are some America's League Scrimbucks. Probably the highlights, EG, looking pretty decent. 14-7 on Fusion, 15-5 on Turtle Troop, NRG 7-6 on YFP, Sentinels with 12-4 against GMD's team, but actually Lev, I mean, even this, Sad Esports, who recently qualified through for challenges, I think they were the first team to officially qualify, they tied Lev 7-7, so, you know, maybe pretty impressive from them. There's other screenshots as well here that are worthy of note that, are, well, I'll leave all the links in the description box below, all that type of good stuff, if you guys want to check it out. But very much intrigued to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, take care, and I'll see you next time.